Okay, welcome. How are you? Great. Okay, I have three people here. <laughs> so welcome to my presentation. Uh, I am the last one. Hopefully it would be interesting. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. There is a mic over there. So just get up and ask your question. Um, today, I'm going to talk about Symphony, a little bit about Drupal, but you have to know that I'm not a Drupalist at all. Uh, I tried it for Drupal version 8, and it was like uh, very difficult to me because I'm from Symphony and without all the objects and so on, with the hooks, and it was weird for me. So, um, yeah, I'm going to talk about both Symphony and Drupal. Who am I? I'm Sarah. Nice to meet you. Uh, I'm working for Sensio Labs. Of course, during the whole day, everybody talked about Sensio Labs in here. Um, but especially, I'm, I'm working uh, on Sensio Labs University. If you want to know more about this structure, just come see me. I will be around. Uh, actually, I will be at the meetup. Uh, I will talk about that later. I'm a trainer and a developer. And I love to share. That's why I'm here today. And yeah, I'm trying to contribute to Symphony 2, as uh, I'm sure you are doing the same with uh, Drupal. I'm living in Paris currently. Great city. Great city because there will be uh, the SymphonyCon. So it will be in, this, in December, and it will be uh, at uh, a special place called the Folie Bergère. So yeah, if you want to come, you're more than welcome. So what's the plan today? I'm going to talk about this, uh, the philosophy of, of Symphony. Then I'm going to talk a little bit about dependency injection, which is the heart of uh, Symphony. Not that much because uh, Richard uh, did it right before me. And at the end, I will talk a little bit about templating because Javier already talked about it before. So let's begin with the philosophy. Uh, you may know that uh, when you are doing the web application, most of the time, the protocol that you are using is HTTP, okay? When we are talking about HTTP, HTTP you, we have uh, the request, okay? Which is basically uh, some text with the method. We have the URI, and of course, we have the protocol. Then we could have some headers, and of course, a body for the request. Then, when we want to respond something, we use a response, an HTTP response, which is like you can see here. Most of the time we forget about that. But yeah, the job of Symphony is basically to do that. Okay? So maybe you heard that Symphony is an MVC framework. Actually, it's not, it's just an HTTP framework. And if you are talking about uh, architecture, uh, what Symfony provides you actually is the view layer and the controller layer, okay? So I'm going to explain this big uh, thing. Don't worry, it's going to be okay. We will go step by step, okay? So yeah, first the HTTP request, we just saw it before. So we have it from internet basically. And yeah, we receive it from or maybe, yeah, in the front controller, okay? When I'm talking about the front controller, if you are um, a Symfony developer, I'm talking about the app.php. In Drupal is the index.php, okay? And the job of this front controller is basically to turn the request that comes from the HTTP for, uh, protocol to an object, okay? Which is part of the HTTP foundation. So, yeah, and after that, we need to communicate with the HTTP kernel. We'll see that right after. So, two components involved here, which, is, which are used by Drupal first. Uh, first, the HTTP foundation, which is an abstraction of the request and the response that we know from the HTTP protocol. And we have the HTTP kernel, which uh, has one responsibility, which is turning a response in uh, a request to a response, okay? So again, in Drupal, it's just the index.php. In here, it's just uh, a Drupal version eight I got 
uh, for myself to try it. Okay. And in there, we can see those lines, especially the one, the biggest one, which is getting a request on the right side, on, yeah, on the right side, and turning it to a response. Okay? So the first line is basically creating uh, the request from the globals. When we're talking about the globals, of course, we are talking about the global variable of PHP, dollar underscore uh, get, dollar underscore post, and so on to get the object, and then, yeah, turning it to respond, then send it, basically it's just an echo with a header, and that's it. Now we can go further with, this time, the routing component. And the routing component here has one responsibility, actually it has two, but we are going, going just to talk about this one, is basically to map a URL to a set of parameters. That's basically what I'm, showing you right above or underneath. Uh, so we have the name of the root, we have the URI that we want to uh, match with um, a callable, actually. When in here, you see that it's a controller. So the special underscore controller is very important because it's um, an attribute that is used by the, by the routing component saying, okay, you are going to call this controller with this special method, which, which is index action, okay? And yeah, just for the record, uh, the second uh, responsibility of the routing component is for generating URLs, okay? So in Drupal, we have this file that we need to uh, complete, and we have to follow this convention, which is the name of the module, um, dot routing dot YAML. Okay, you will see that all the configuration is in YAML, maybe you already know that, but it was a, a premiere for me because all the time for the routing in Symfony, I'm always using the annotations, so it was new for me. Okay, now we can go further in our kind of eye, and now it's about calling a controller, of course, because remember, the um, responsibility of root, the routing component is basically mapping a URI to a set of uh, parameters, which is underscore controller, which is my controller. And of course, I have my model in view because the controller has some responsibilities, which is uh, making sure that the communication between um, the model and the view is done correctly, okay? And of course, um, a controller has uh, one main responsibility, which is returning a response. Okay, remember, the philosophy of Symfony is getting a request and answer a response. So basically you have this kind of code, okay? And yeah, we don't have much. We're just returning a response with some content, okay? Uh, I will show you that after when we will talk about templating that in Drupal actually you don't have to answer a response, to return a response. It's uh, an array and I, when I discussed with uh, some Drupalists, it's always about array in Drupal, so you're not lost. Um, okay, so let's go further this time. And yeah, we have just one job here, returning an HTTP foundation response. And yeah, we have uh, the HTTP response, and that's it. This is the main goal of Symfony. That's why Drupal used uh, HTTP foundation, HTTP kernel, some of the routing components, um, but there is more, okay? Just wait for it. Um, <laughs> it's the event system. And I know that you are uh, used to hooks, and uh, it looks like hooks, but it's not the same because uh, it's not in a, in a script with some functions and so on, it's all objects, so let me explain you. Uh, the event dispatcher component uh, helps you to easily decouple code and plug in new features, okay? That way, you're not obliged to iterate from any object to add new features, okay? So, two main concepts here. We have the dispatching of an event, so let's say, okay, something happened, and the second concept is basically to listen or, or subscribe to that event, okay? So, the event, it's an object, again, 
and in there you just have to store so some information that you need in your listeners okay that way from listeners to listeners you can grab some information and pass it to the next one okay the listener is just a valid php callable and most of the time it will be of course an object and yeah when i say callable it could be anything that you know in php which are a function name an instance an instance method or a static method or a closure or a lambda function okay maybe you heard about this difference uh, as I'm doing a lot of training, most of the time people are asking, what is the difference between an event listener and an event subscriber? Uh, a matter of taste, actually. Okay, so let me show you some code. Don't be afraid. In here, I'm showing you uh, an event subscriber, and basically we have a class that has to implement the event subscriber interface, and you see that the, this interface is coming from the event dispatcher component, of course, okay? As we are implementing an interface, there is some contract to fulfill, and the contract is to implement the static method called get subscribed events. In there, we have to return an array, which is the name of the event we are listening to, and we have also the method that we need to call. The method we need to call is, of course, in the same class of the listener, okay? I'm not showing this to you because you may know that it's public function in here for the article.save, uh, it will be on insert article, okay? The little number uh, right next to the um, method is the priority. So the highest priority you have, the higher, um, the sooner the listener will be executed, okay? In here I can see when I'm reading this that for this, the um, event article.save, I have two methods that will be uh, called, okay? The priority is five, then 10. So basically, on insert article will be executed before the on update article, okay? We have also the article.delete, and it's another event. And of course, we will call the method on delete article, which is priority zero. Actually, by default, it's priority zero, okay? In there, as you can see, when you are opening the subscriber, you already know which events you are subscribing to, what is the priority, and of course, which uh, method you are going to uh, execute, okay? Remind this for the listener after. You have a second uh, step to fulfill, which is adding the subscriber to the dispatcher. I didn't tell you that actually the event system is driven by the event dispatcher, of course. So the event dispatcher is basically just an object. And on this, you just have to uh, call the method add subscriber. Of course, in Drupal, you don't have to do this. It's only if you are doing, let's say, um, an application, a plain old PHP um, application, and you are just using the event dispatcher component if you are doing that, you're obliged to instantiate the um, event dispatcher, then add the subscriber, okay? We'll see after when we'll be, um, uh, yeah, in one or two slides. Okay, we know about subscriber. Now, what is the difference with, uh, between uh, with event listener? This time, the listener is also a class, of course. You can see that there is no interface to implement this time. And of course, we have to implement a method. Could be anything. Most of the time, we use the on kernel uh, request, on kernel exception, on kernel blah blah. Because in here, uh, we know that it's listening. We know because uh, we know Symphony, okay? Uh, that we are listening to the kernel dot request event. We'll talk about the events that are triggered by Symphony. In there, I'm just do doing some stuff like making sure that I'm in the master request. When I'm talking about master request, it's basically that you could have several requests in one, um, at, at one time. Let's say I'm, I want to display the page slash users, okay? And in there, I could do, when I do in there, when I say in there, it's in the controller. 
In the controller, I could do some things and do a forward. And when I do a forward, I'm calling basically another controller. And when I'm doing that, I'm doing a sub request and so on. I could have many requests as I need, actually. So that's why, um, yeah, maybe you will he hear about uh, the request stack, maybe. Okay, so I'm just making sure that I'm the beginning of the stack of the request. Otherwise, I'm returning and it does nothing, okay? After that, I'm just getting some attributes from the request. You can see that, as I said before, in the event, I have some information in there. I just make sure that I have the, make, the request and basically Symfony took care about setting the request at some point. So I just get it. I get some attributes, which is underscore file in there. And setting a response. If I'm setting an, a response in here, it's just saying, okay, you are going to finish all the things you wanted to do and and call the um, and go back to uh, to the front controller, and then send the request as you know uh, the um, HTTP re uh, response. Okay, so basically what you can see here is that in your events, event subscriber, event listener, you can set a response at whenever you want actually. Okay, so you do this class, you go, you do this method, and the second step is basically to add the listener to your dispatcher, like the subscriber, but this time it's the method add listener. In there, you can see that there are, uh, there are more um, arguments. Of course, we have the event we are listening to. In here, you can see that I'm using the constant. It's a good practice, actually, to use constant instead of uh, the name of the event directly. And I'm just saying, okay, when the event will be triggered, I will, Symfony has to call this class called my listener with the method on kernel request. Okay? So basically, the difference between the two is, again, a matter of taste. I prefer the subscriber because when you open the class, you see everything you need. But you can do whatever you want, and actually, uh, you may know that um, about the priority. Of course, for the listener, you can put another everything you want about the priority. At the end, Symfony just do uh, all the subscriber becomes uh, listeners. And of course, listeners uh, stay the listeners, okay? All right, so yeah, I talked about events. I talked about listeners, event subscriber, event listeners. But I didn't talk about the fact that you have to trigger the events. Okay, to trigger an event, it's really easy. You have to get the dispatcher, which is here. I'm instantiating the event dispatcher, then on the, di the yeah, the event dispatcher, I'm just um, calling the method dispatch. The, the arguments are really easy to understand. The first one is the event, and the second one, of course, is the event, which uh, has all the information we need to um, make sure that in your listeners you will have all the information you need. Easy, right? Okay, so I told you that in Drupal and in Symfony actually, you don't have to do this. You have to do this only if you are using the component by itself in your PHP um, project. Let's say you want to migrate from an old PHP application to Symfony step by step you don't want to change everything, you can just grab a component, install it, and yeah, okay, let's say we want the event dispatcher now, okay? So in Drupal, you just have to create a service. To create a service, you have to uh, create an, uh, a file, yeah, in your module, and your mo uh, you, this file has to fulfill uh, the, um, yeah, this constraint, which is the name of your module, dot services, dot YAML, okay? It's at the root of your, um, of your module. And in there, you can see that there is a special key services. You have to put it, it's important, because it's a service. Um, I just put, uh, after that, the name of my service, which is weather.job underscore listener, 
could be anything actually, then I'm just saying, okay, this is the class you are going to instantiate. There is maybe some arguments because my listener needs an email in the constructor. And what is very important is the tag, okay? By just saying this uh, service has the tag event dispatcher, uh, event subscriber, sorry, I'm just saying, okay, it's going to be a subscriber and it will be loaded and so on, okay? So in Drupal, you just have to create the class and then uh, just declare it as a service with the tag. Same thing for um, the event listener, but this time you have to put some more information, which is, which are, sorry, the event you are listening to and the method you are going to call when the event is triggered, okay? If you, are, if you have several methods in your listener uh, your event listener that you want to um, execute when the kernel dot, um, the kernel dot request is triggered, you just have to add one line and one line as, and again, okay? In the event subscriber, of course, you don't have to do that kind, that kind of thing because everything is done in the get uh, subscribe events uh, static uh, yeah, method, okay? I talked about one event which is kernel.request. Actually, in, Symf in Symfony uh, 2.7, we have six. And um, yeah, it's really important to know them and when to hook your code because um, yeah, you have to know that the kernel.request is the first event that is triggered. The second one is the, con uh, the kernel.controller and basically it's uh, when the router component already know uh, which, uh, which um, callable he, it has to call regarding the URI, okay? So at this point, you know which callable you have to, to have, so basically your controller. The kernel.view is triggered only if your controller doesn't return a response, okay? It's really useful for Drupal because of course in uh, your controller you will see that you have to return an array. So of course there is a listener listening to this kind of event to make sure that it grabs the, um, the array you're returning and make sure that it returns the right response regarding the, the theme and so on. The kernel.response, of course, is triggered when the response is returned, okay? So at some point, you want maybe to change the response or whatever you want. And you have the kernel.terminate, which is triggered uh, when an exception occurred. Oh, actually, there are, there are seven, uh, seven events. Sorry, I forgot one. Uh, and you have the kernel.finish request, which is triggered only if, um, actually, it's useful only if you have PHP FPM. And uh, you will see in the documentation of uh, Symfony that basically, uh, this event is useful only to um, perform some uh, action that you don't want to wait for to display the response. So let's say you want to send uh, thousands of emails, okay, uh, but you don't want to wait for the mailer to send all the emails to send, you know, the, um, the response to your user, okay? So you just have to hook on this event and make your uh, logic in this listener to send all the emails. But don't forget that you need to have PHP FPM, otherwise it's not useful at all. And yeah, the seventh actually is the kernel.exception. Forgot about that. And of course it's triggered when there is an exception. And basically you will see that when you are throwing uh, an exception, I never tried in Drupal, but in Symfony, um, when you are th throwing an exception, you will see that there is no, there is a response actually, because there is a listener listening to this special event, making sure that it gets uh, the type of the exception and returns the right response. When I say the right response, it could be uh, some content with the right status code, let's say 404 or 500 and so on. Okay, so all together now. We have the HTTP request. We are turning it 
we are just receiving it in our, our front controller in the index.php. We have the HTTP kernel with the special method handle, which takes a request and has to return a response. But of course, for that, we need some controller. For this controller, it goes by the routing component. In your controller, of course, you have some communication with the model layer and the view layer. At the end, we have, of course, an HTTP foundation response. Could be written by yourself or by a listener or whatever you want. And at the end, of course, you have the HTTP response. And at some point, you could have the event listener, uh, an event listener or an event subscriber. Okay? Easy. Actually, if you understand that, you can, uh, it's only useful to know where is the code. When you know, when you don't know where, uh, does, where the things is going on, because uh, yeah, most of the time we put everything in the controller and so on. Just remember that there is some things here and there. If you know the whole thing, it will be okay. So let's talk about Drupal 8 and Symphony. A story of love, I guess. Uh, here are the components that are used by Drupal. We saw actually the Symphony Event Dispatcher. We saw the HTTP Foundation, of course. We saw um, the routing. We saw HTTP kernel. And that's it. But they are the main ones, okay? Now I'm just going to talk about the dependency injection one. So. Actually, I'm just going to talk about what is the, the point of doing services and what is the, the service container, uh, the parameters, and so on. So the, the dependency uh, injection component just allows you to standardize and centralize the way objects are constructed. So what I'm saying here is just that the dependency injection com uh, component is just managing the way the services, so the objects, are instantiated. So it does just new, new the object, the, the class, and that's it, okay? What you are going to do is some configuration to make sure that the instantiation of this class is done correctly, that's it. So three main concepts about the dependency injection comp uh, container, um, component, sorry. The first one is, of course, the service container. The second one are the services, of course, and parameters. So the service container, as I said before, is just here to manage the instantiation of your classes. And when I say classes, of course, I'm talking about services. Um, it makes sure that you, when you want to get a service, it gets always the same instance and it stores some parameters. That's it. So it's a big object that just makes sure that the instantiation of the classes are done very correctly. What is a service? It's not that easy to understand when you don't do services. Uh, maybe most of the time when we are doing some logic, you are doing this in your model layer, and in the model layer you could have, let's say, a domain object, could be user, it could be address, it could be, I don't know, anything you want, and you put some methods that can contain a lot of code, and that's it. But a service is not the way uh, you, you think. Um, when I began with a Symfony and framework and services and so on, I was like, okay, a service is just uh, a class where I can put some logic, and that's it, okay? Actually, it's not that wrong, but you just have to ask one question when you want to do a service. Does it have a state? And when we are talking about a user, an address, or uh, I don't know, a chair and so on, it has a state, okay? So it's a domain object, it's not a service. You have to remember that a service is basically just a PHP object that can perform Global task. When I say global task, it could be a mailer, a logger, uh, something that can grab information from your uh, database and so on. Okay? That's basically what I'm saying here. And what is a parameter? It's just global configuration. 
So you will have just key value that you can use whenever you want uh, if you have access to the container, okay? In Drupal, what I said before is um, that when you are um, declaring some services and parameters, you have to put it in this file, which is the name of the module, dot services, dot channel, okay? And it looks like this. We saw a little bit uh, before about the event subscriber and event listener. In here, I'm just adding the part of with the parameters, okay? And as I said before, it's just key value, okay? And in your services, as you are um, just saying, okay, I have a parameter called weather underscore endpoint, I can use it in the services, let's say in an argument, with the person sign, okay? When you are using the special person sign, you're just saying, okay, uh, grab it from the parameters. Easy. The add sign is just saying, okay, this special string is going to be referencing to another service, okay? So you have to know that for the arguments, it could be a string, a service, uh, it could be a collection, it could be a constant also. But in YAML, you can't use PHP constant. So, sorry. Uh, and yeah, about the tags, uh, just a quick reman a reminder, I, didn't, I don't know if I talked about that, but the tag is just uh, a sticker saying, okay, this service is really special. You have to treat it an, in a different way. And as you can see here, I'm tagging the um, service weather job underscore listener only because I want to make sure that it's going to be treated differently because I want to make sure that it's an event subscriber so called when uh, an event is triggered, okay? About the templating, so don't worry, we are going to talk about that. Basically, in your code, you have this kind of code, okay? So in here, we are in, um, uh, in a template called layout.twig, and in there, you have just HTML code. What you can see is that you have kind of different things which are the block right here. I have a block title, I have a block style sheets, I have a block content, and then JavaScript. Here, if you were not at the, the talk of Javier, it's basically placeholders. He called it some holes. It's, uh, it's really nice to see because in here, you can see that basically in your HTML code, you're just putting some, yeah, some blocks right in there that you can actually override, okay? To override them, you just have to extend from the template we saw before, which is the layout.twig, and just creating the block that are uh, already defined in the parent, so here, I'm just doing inheritance. Of course, you can do more with templating uh, and twig, okay? So again, uh, I hope the presentation of Javier will be up uh, soon, uh, but of course, you have um, a lot of documentation about that. But basically, when you are beginning with the templating part, it's, yeah, it's mainly this. You have some for statements, you have some things to, um, to do, there is a main thing that you need to understand, which are uh, the curly brackets with the person sign, which saying I'm going to do something, as you may see here. As I have here the curly bracket person sign, I'm just saying, okay, you are going to do something, extend from a parent, okay? Then with the block, I'm saying, okay, you are going to take this block and override it and so on. The double curly bracket here is just saying I'm going to display something, okay? And of course this variable is not coming from nowhere, it's coming from the controller, okay? So, in Drupal, you have um, three main things to do, yeah? The first one is the weather.module. I don't know if in Drupal 7 you had this. Uh, but in there, 
you have to know that you have to implement some things called hook. You know that, of course. Uh, and in there you have just to say, okay, what is the name of the template I'm going to use for the controller, um, for the controller I'm using. Uh, actually, yeah, it's not the controller, it's the theme. So the key forecast is basically took from this time I'm in the controller and I have the hashtag theme and it's the same name as the, um, the key I had in my uh, array right there. Okay, then I create my template and that's it, it works. Okay, that's why I'm saying there are uh, three steps because yeah, of course in here you can see that the name of the template is of course forecasts because that's what, that's what I told to the hook right here. Okay, um, there is documentation of course, so feel free to go there. Um, there is, uh, when I began with uh, Drupal 8, it was very difficult because the documentation is always on, under construction. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't work. So yeah, try it out. Uh, it's a way of um, contributing to Drupal and make sure that uh, it will go out one day. Uh, but yeah, uh, in the twig.centralabs.org, you will see all the documentation about twig and you have to know that whole functionality of Twig is not used by Drupal, okay? So you just have to try it and see. And that's it for me. If you need any training, just come see us, we have a booth. If you want to know more about uh, Blackfire, again, come see us. And if you want to know about my cat, also, it's Lannister, he's really cute. I love him. Uh, <laughs> he has a Twitter account, so feel free to follow him. And tonight there will be a, a meetup. Maybe you know it. Uh, I don't know if you see something. It's at the Auditorium AXA. Yeah. So come, come. It will be awesome. There will be Fabian, uh, which is the creator of Symphony. There will be us, Javier. Uh, so, yeah, come see us. Thank you very much. Any question? It was really clear. <laughs> really nice. Okay, thank you very much.